I'm Siraj, uh, do you want to go out sometime? Ah, uh, no thanks. Wait, wait, check out my genomic and transcriptomic profile. <gasps> Will you have my baby? Hello world, it's Siraj, and this is a live demo of AlphaCare generating synthetic genomic data using deep learning on a data set of 5,000 lab rats. Genomic data is really hard to find, so generating synthetic data helps improve predictions of deep learning models, particularly when predicting drug responses for patients is important, which helps doctors recommend optimal prescriptions. In this video, we're going to learn about the most valuable type of biomedical data, multi-omics, and how deep learning models can be trained on them to optimize longevity in patients. We'll also use Rapid API to help us find drug metadata easily. The cryptocurrency movement rejected the fundamental premises of the legacy financial system, namely that only government printed money had value. GM, GM. Similarly, the longevity movement rejects the fundamental premise of the legacy medical system, namely that reversing the aging process is impossible. And this branches the entire biomedical tech stack in a new direction. Instead of going in for tests when we have symptoms, we'll have constant monitoring of multiple analytes called multi-omics data. Over the past few decades, we've seen incredible advances in both hardware and software that allows medical researchers to study human health at the smallest scales, at the level of tiny molecules more powerful as well as more affordable microscopes, sequencing techniques, and computing power has produced petabytes of data. Omics is a molecular term that refers to the study of a set of molecules. Genomics was the first discipline to emerge. It's the study of the entire genome, also known as DNA. DNA stores information about your traits, including physical prowess, dietary needs, intelligence, and personality. And sometimes DNA sequences change because certain genes are switched on or off due to age or exposure to environmental factors, like the anxiety I had when Solona tanked. These are called epigenetic changes, and its study is called epigenomics. While DNA holds the data, it doesn't apply it to specific tasks. In order to extract the data and send it as a message to the right place to, say, make proteins, DNA is transcribed into a messenger molecule called RNA. The study of the sum of all of these RNA transcripts or translations is called transcriptomics. The resulting tens of thousands of proteins from these processes are individually responsible for thousands of critical tasks in the body. The study of how these proteins are produced, degraded, and expressed is called proteomics. Proteins degrade into a set of molecules called metabolites, including carbohydrates and lipids. This is the final downstream result of the gene transcription process. It represents the current state of the biological system, and the study of this is called metabolomics. The challenge of modern medicine is to integrate all of this data into a complete picture of health called multi-omic analysis. In computer science terms, the genome is a hard disk. It stores data. The epigenome is the disk reader. The transcriptome is the interpreter. And the metabolome is the process monitor. Lastly, the proteome are the applications themselves. Aging is the loss of information over time. The hard disk, the genome, gets scratched. But by studying all the omics layers, we can understand the flow of information more accurately and eventually learn how to preserve and restore this information, effectively reversing the aging process. Biomarkers play a significant role in planning preventative measures and decisions for patients that can be classified as either diagnostic, prognostic, or predictive. 
So let's dive into three different real world use cases of this so you can see what I mean. Study my DNA, I call it genomics. Study the way it changes, epigenomics. Extract the data and call it transcript omics. Brain in proteins, it's proteomics. And when they degrade, it's called metabolomics. Traditionally, a technique called single cell RNA sequencing gave a good overview of which types of immune cells exist and how many in a given sample. More recently, a technique called cellular indexing of transcriptomes and epitopes by sequencing or CyteSeq was created to measure not just RNA, but also the proteome from the same cell. It generates sequencing readouts for not just gene expressions, but protein expressions as well. And this gives us a higher resolution overview. Taking a look at the first CyteSeq dataset published in 2017, we'll see that it measured the transcriptome of 8,000 cells and the expressions of 13 proteins. There are two different CSV files here, one for gene expression and one for protein expression. In this case, concatenating both types of data together. So each row is a cell and each column is either a gene or a protein. These two data types have different dimensions. So we'll encode them separately, then concatenate the outputs. We'll then pass the outputs to another encoder. Then a decoder will attempt to reconstruct the input. This is an autoencoder a deep learning model we can build in PyTorch. And this approach is considered unsupervised. Once trained, we can extract the compressed representation and visualize it into a two-dimensional map generated by a technique called T-SNE. We'll see a very clear picture of which cells are present and how they're related. And this will help doctors understand how well the treatment is working. Let's move on to the second use case, diagnosis. We want to diagnose whether a patient has cancer or not. Often, patients are diagnosed as either healthy or sick using individual data sets with varying levels of accuracy. But if we combine data sets, we can theoretically boost accuracy. If we look at this single cell omics data set, we can see that it consists of gene expression data DNA methylation data, and open chromatin region data for a group of cells. This is a combination of epigenomic and transcriptomic data. Since there are different distributions like binary, categorical, and continuous, we can normalize it all by combining them using a joint probability. Then we can model it using a technique called UMAP for dimensionality reduction. This creates pairwise connections between data points. And when visualized, this gives us a clear readout of cells that are either sick or healthy. Now, onto the third use case, predictive analytics. Last year, DeepMind released AlphaFold 2, the most advanced protein folding algorithm of all time, as well as the largest protein database in the world. Researchers can use this database to predict how proteins fold and this helps them better design drugs to target certain diseases. If we predict a certain drug to be optimal, we can use Rapid API to find a database that will give us more information. For example, the My Health Box API will, given a drug parameter like aspirin, return a whole lot of metadata about that drug, like the active ingredients and the dosage amount in JSON format, which we could integrate into our app. One area of exploration I'd love to see for better drug design is to combine this protein data set with another omics data set, but that can be a topic for a future video. For now, let's just generate some synthetic genetic data. Generally, we have very little public genetics data available for training, and this data is often heavily imbalanced. In order to make predictions, deep neural networks for say, predicting the risk of a genetic disorder, we're gonna need a lot of data and a blockchain, just kidding. One workaround is to generate synthetic data using a generative adversarial network. Starting with a data set of 4,000 rats, we can feed this into a GAN. The generator will generate new examples randomly 
and the discriminator will classify each as real or fake. Then both are updated using backpropagation, and over time the generator gets really good at generating realistic samples, and once we have generated enough genotypes, we can later train a model on them that will be really good at predicting the likelihood of genetic disease in a rat. Okay, that was a lot, I understand, but there are only five things to remember from this video. If we look at the molecular biology stack in computer science terms, the genome is the hard disk. It stores information. The epigenome is the disk reader. The transcriptome is the interpreter. The metabolome is the process monitor. And the proteome consists of all of the applications. The more we integrate this data, the better we'll be able to make accurate predictions and someday reverse the aging process. Please subscribe for more programming videos. And for now, I've got to sequence my Sirajome. So thanks for watching.